Hello everybody, how's it going today? Go Plasma 231 here, back again today to talk about Oshinoko. And today we're going to be talking about interlude number three. So, like I said, today we're covering the third interlude of Oshinoko. Of course, these interludes, I think we're having four of them, so this is number three out of four. These are pretty much going on while the actual author of the, the writer of Oshinoko... Um, Aka Akasaka, he is sort of pretty much taking a few weeks off, taking about a month and a half off just to go and um, do stuff. And in this time, Mingo Yorkie, who is the artist, is writing a few very short chapters. Each one of these chapters is about six pages long. So by the very end of it, it's going to be like 24 pages of content, which is pretty much just like an expanded chapter. So that's really all there is to these chapters. They're pretty much just short snippets of seeing some of the Oshinoko characters doing their sort of thing. Um, the first interlude was all about Mimcho, which I thought pretty interesting because she's not really, like, she isn't a very important character, but one we don't really see a whole lot on it. It was per pretty much all about her following her dream and wanting to becoming an idol. It was just a small, really short six page chapter on that. Next one was about Melt, pretty much showing um, how he got very ridiculed, ridiculed online for not being a good actor, but he was sort of doubling down that he was going to be a really good pretty boy, and I actually really enjoyed this chapter, or that chapter, and today we've got a really weird one, because I was throwing out some sort of guesses on what these chapters would be, because to me they seem to be covering characters that weren't really as important to the series as like our four main characters and of course the four main characters are aqua ruby kana and akane right like they are the most important characters in the series right so i was like well it's not going to be focusing on our main characters probably not so we'll probably see um taiki himakawa who is one of the actors in the lila troupe on the really important ones and uh, just a few of those people and i'm like yeah we'll see those less popular characters i'm excited to see which um un like not important character gets next chapter well i was completely wrong on that because when i opened up this chapter about a week ago now i'm getting this recorded very very late but um this is actually a chapter or an interlude all about um kana and akane all right sure i guess the entire theory i had about non non-important characters was completely wrong because we see that both um kana and akane are here at a shoot while everything is going on and we see this sort of producer, I guess. He he looks very weird. He's got like a very big buck tooth sticking out, right? But um, he was just like, my mind, you guys did very well in Tokyo Blade. The dollar of the sponsor seems to be a really big fan of yours now, right? And he's just like, well, can you guys please give me your, your all of your autographs later? I, I really need it, right? And we see that both Kana and Akane are standing here. And we see that both of them sort of speak in tune as both like, we're honored, right? As we see like the mirrored bubbles right next to each other, right? And the producer guy even is just like our um, Bucktooth Bill, as I'm gonna call him. Um, Bucktooth Bill is just like, oh, whoa, look at that. You two are perfectly in sync, right? And he just like looks at me like, the room of your girls being on bad terms with each other is false after all. As we see the both of them again in sync, just like do a laugh, like, ha 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 ha. Just very not in caring about it and we see another panel where the two of them both go of course it is at the same exact time right really showing that this director dude is very right with oh yeah they're very in sync at that point we cut over to the dressing room where we see both akane and kana are both getting um all of their makeup on and everything for the role as we pretty much see that kana's is like it's a commercial shoot for a director who doesn't like retakes so let's finish that very but finishes up very quickly. And we see the con is like, hey, that's my line, right? As we see the two um, makeup artists who are putting like their makeup on again, they're all taken care of. Um, like the one taking care of Kana is just like, man, they're on really bad terms. And then the one taking care of Akana is like, man, so they are on bad terms, right? Obviously just showing like, yeah, these two are on bad terms, right? And we get some narration, which I, I too forget, I think if I'm not mistaken, that this is from Kana's point of view, but it very well could be from um, Akane's, or it may just be the dichotomy of both of them thinking the same thing at the exact same time. But we pretty much just get narration saying, a pain in the neck, um, a butt in the sky. I, I feel at ease with her presence, right? As they're just like, you can call me whatever name you like. 
as we pretty much see that they're getting ready to walk out and we see that they're in sort of like some pirate attire as we see Khan just like all right um let me give it my all right and Akane's like hey that's my line and we pretty much just get a bunch of narration as all the dialogue of the commercial is going on so I'll pretty much just read the dialogue first or the narration first and go back over to dialogue so narration pretty much is just like my life is all about the play even if the role doesn't link to reality even if it's not a relationship or a line it's not that easy to understand it operates logical signals from the head to toe will i'll move as if i'm being controlled and with this feeble electric current wrapped up around our bodies um will collide fireworks set off everywhere as we sort of see the both of them are just sort of having this moment of acting is something that we sort of just innately feel and whenever we get into like a role our bodies just move on their own and whenever these two like actors who don't get along with each other come together they make a really big explosion and people can tell something is going on between them pretty much just saying that yes it'll result in a better performance or at least that's what i've taken away from it right but as we get all of like the dialogue and everything, we pretty much see Khan's like, all right, put up the sails, we'll go to an unexplored land. And we see Akane's like, I won't let you sort of holding out a sword. Um, Akane's like, I won't let you have it, absolutely not. As we see that um, Akane jumps up and has a sword and sort of comes down up over. Kana is like, try to stop me then. As everything goes on, we see Kana's like, as you wish. And sort of just uh, two more sword strikes going at it. As we see all of a sudden as they're just attacking, they both sort of hold out their hands and in their hands together is um, the product they're advertising. And at unison, once again, they're just like, in such a hot summer, you can easily wipe off your sweat. Um, Sorry, spectacular sheet. And pretty much just like a brief advertisement here. It's like two fighting and then just, all right, we're the same person. Well, so let's show it our all. And we see the director's like, all right then, cut. And they're like, just one take and done. As we sort of see that, yeah, that's all the commercial they had to film. It wasn't really anything big. And we just get some narration again, just going, you can call me whatever name you like, but I won't do it because it's dumb. As pretty much we just see um, Connie's like, a worthy opponent? Her, you've got to be kidding. She has such a long way to go. And Connie's is like, what? Well, you were too excited, Connie Chan, right? And she's like, hey, don't call me Connie Chan. And Connie's just like, oh, man. Geez, you meanie, and that's really the whole chapter. Um, while this is an interesting character moment between both Kana and Akane, I definitely really enjoyed just like looking into Melt's character or really looking into Mimcho's character more than I really cared about this Kane and Akane stuff. Granted, I'm a fan of Akane and not that much of a fan of Kana, but I mean, I really don't have too much more to say about it. It's really just a simple thing, just going like, hey. Well, it's not fight because it's dumb, but at the same time, we're going to fight because it is dumb. Yeah, take it how you will. Um, it's really all I've got to say here. I, I know it isn't really much at all, but um, next chapter of Ocean Co. will be arriving on the 6th of September of 2023. Of course, this is going to be interlude four, and then from there, we should be good and golden to um, get back into the actual story of Ocean Co. with chapter number 100 and 67 if i'm not mistaken so we will have been on hiatus for a little while but we'll eventually get back and get, get on to some good oceanoco action um if you did enjoy this very brief video on interlude 3 i've covered the other two interludes on the chapter on the channel along with a bunch of other chapters of oceanoco i have covered about 15 of them so if you think that sounds interesting you can go check those out on the channel as it is right now um i also cover plenty of other anime and manga stuff so you can go Check that out if you think Weekly Shonen Jump or other things are cool. I've got those. And with that, really don't have too much else to say. And I'll actually be back tomorrow to talk about Oshinoko Interlude at number four. Again, this was Interlude number three. And I don't have anything else to say. So I'm going to go Plasma 231. Out.